Hey, y'all. Sorry about that. I was had some trouble with the other live screen. Let me go over here and check and make sure it's not. I'll make sure it's not still going. But anyway, uh, hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, is anybody still watching the old screen or know what's going on uh, on the on the other? Apparently, I'd set up a live stream video. It was supposed to happen at eight thirty, and then it said they. Uh, had some trouble with uh, had some trouble with the I don't know computer communicating with my computer or something junk like that. But anyway, hopefully everybody got over here. I apologize for the confusion. I'm always working with this stuff, trying to figure it out. So uh, anyway, um, I just got done shooting a little video here tonight. Earlier, I did a uh, a video of uh, how to reheat ribs. Somebody had asked me about reheating barbecue. Oh, let's see. We got some people in here. What's up? Let's see. J, uh, Joe D, what's going on? Smoking Bulldog, Lee Gillian, uh, Steve Hicks. All right. Let me go over here and try to make sure there's nothing going on with the um, with my other, uh, the other video that was supposed to be live. It's not, obviously. I need to erase the... Um, the link I put on on Facebook. Give me just a second. What's up? We got somebody from Georgia here. Cool, cool. Let me go ahead and just erase this little post because I don't want people going there and they can't find the real live uh, deal. But um, yeah, sitting here uh, tonight. Like I said, we were, we were reheating some ribs that I barbecued. Just doing a reheat video. It was pretty interesting how I did it. Y'all have to go check it out um, if you would. Please do, but uh, anyway, uh, y'all let me know if there's anything that y'all have questions about tonight. Joe Smokehouse Barbecue, what's up, Joe? Heck yeah, heck yeah. Always good to hear from you, man. Uh, hello from Western Carolina. Cool, cool, cool deal. Uh, i tell you what I've been doing here lately is uh, been trying to transfer over to doing more uh Charcoal cooks, you see, I'm going to be doing. Uh, I've got this this Fogo charcoal over here. It's supposed to be really, really good. And I tried it this weekend. I really liked it. Created some great flavor to the meat. Uh, used it. Uh, let's see, day before yesterday, whatever I did that on uh, the Mother's Day cook with the lobster and the steak and everything. It's really good. We got some more folks coming in. What's up, Leo? What's up, Mike? All right, how do you get more smoke out of a pellet smoker? Get you one of those uh, amazing smoke tubes, or I bought an off-brand one. Just go to uh, Amazon and Google smoke tube or amazing smoke tube or something like that. Amazon did a bunch of knockoffs will come up and get one for like 10 bucks, you know, uh, so that they work really well. Which is better, gas or charcoal? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with charcoal on that one. Actually, you know, I've got one cooker. It's my big rotisserie pit that I like, and it's the gas and charcoal. So you can get the charcoal to get your good flavor and stuff like that, and then put your gas in and, uh, you know, regulate the heat a little bit if you need to. Let's see, does the Fogo burn better than the Kingsford? I really, really love the way, the uniformity of the Fogo. Okay, let me tell you this. Because... All the pieces are basically the same size, so it's not like you have little pieces, really big pieces, all that kind of stuff. Now that back there, that's the super premium lump. I haven't used it yet. It's really big chunks. I've been using the premium, so I really do like the burn quality of it. Um, let's see. Do you know if Yoder will sell the new motherboard for the Y64 that can be used? Well, yes, absolutely. It'll be out third quarter this year. Expect that, I guess, around October by the time the new iPhone comes out. <laughs> You know, if you uh, see, see anybody else, uh, what's up? Joe Smokehouse again, double kill, 434. Uh, when am I firing up my stick burner? You know what? I'd like to kind of do that this weekend. Um, I've got my good charcoal here, that big super, super premium Fogo. It would be good for that. I think, uh, you know, anytime. You've got good weather, not a whole ton of wind, rain, and everything like that. I'd love to get that big big cooker out. 
I really need some stuff to put on though. But kind of right now, I've, I've started a new job, so it's been kind of kind of hard being able to buy a bunch of extra meat. You know, uh, don't know. You do live videos. Got one from your oyster bed video. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I do. I do the live videos. Or I used to do them pretty regular every Saturday night. But somebody asked about doing a live video the other night. I said, well, heck, I'll do one again. But I was trying to get to where I could broadcast it so everybody kind of know what was coming on. So I tried to do it an hour or so before. And um, I'm just going to close this door. I'll drive it up. Anyway, um, I just season my new Lone Star, somebody said. Oh, man, yeah, that, that uh, Lone Star. They make a good cooker. Uh, Lone Star for sure is, is one of the best grills I know about there. Um, yeah, of course, you know, there, there's a bunch of good cookers out there now. Uh, how's my garden doing? Oh, gosh, I don't even want to think about that. There's really no garden this year. Uh, do I have a main? Do you have a video on how to maintain a final fish? I don't. I need to do something like that. That's a good point. Ever used uh, Ruben's, Ruben's Black Magic? Absolutely. There's some back there on that shelf. That was the first like charcoal activated rub. I think that came out. It was really, really good. Um, oh shoot! Uh, let me see if there's. If it's still, I see the white. I see their white magic stuff right, right over here. Yeah, I see Miss Ruben's White Magic. I'm not sure. I'm probably out of the Black Magic, but it was some really good stuff. Um, it's similar to. The gun smoke stuff, gunpowder seasoning on, and I actually, Fogo has a seasoning right now too, uh, the rub, and it's another charcoal seasoning. It's, it's good stuff, but it really is. i tell you what I'm, I'm really into trying now, different things, is different barbecue sauces from different regions. Uh, somebody sent me this Blue Point barbecue sauce, okay, from South Florida somewhere. And I'll be honest with you, this stuff looked like Heinz 57. And I thought, man, this is not going to be good. And I sat on the back burner for a while. And, man, you know, I don't want anything that expires. I'm always going through that to check expiration dates because we've got so much stuff. And I said, you know what, we better do a video with it. You know, someone was nice enough to pack it up, send it to me and stuff like that. You know, it's uh, nice, you know, I don't do homemade barbecue sauces. Not that I don't, you know, you just, you just never know, you know, stuff like that. You want something that's made in a, you know, in a factory or something like that, and you seal. So anyway, got out, did a rib video with it, I believe, a chicken video, something like that. That stuff was amazing. Had flavor like I've never tasted before, almost like a sweet mustard type with a little bit of molasses kick to it. So that was something new I hadn't tried. So I, I do like to try different types of barbecue sauces and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Anybody ever been to Seattle? Oh, my gosh. I would love to go to Seattle. There's a brand called Filson out of Seattle. I love their luggage and all kind of stuff like that. Um, yeah, in Seattle, they have all kind of seafood up there. You know, of course, it's salmon. My sister lives in Alaska, so, you know, they send me salmon from time to time. But uh, Seattle, I know you all have the fish market. They have the crabs. The, that's where I found out about the Dungeness crabs. A buddy of mine went to Seattle and said, you've got to try these Dungeons. They're amazing, the Dungeness crabs up there. Oh, well, let's see. Texas Rio Bridge. Oh, yeah. Joseph, smash the like button. Yeah, if y'all do that, that's nice. I'd appreciate that. Uh, makes awesome sauces. Yeah. I'm Like I said, I'm going to you know, look into some more of these sauces. Um, yeah, there's so many barbecues. It's really, you don't know what's what anymore. You know, you just got to get out there and try it. And the bad thing about sauces, you know, I've got to where I put a lot of rubs in the freezer now. That if you know, I don't think I'm gonna get to it for a while, you can freeze rub and stake it for years, you know. But sauces, you know, you really can't freeze this barbecue sauce, you gotta use it. I mean, but you know, you're always looking for a sauce. I mean, look at this Crawford's pit spit. I mean, I've got some um, butcher's barbecue sauce sitting over there. I mean, you, you've got you've got a bunch of these things, but uh. I like to try unique stuff, you know, something that's real big in a region. Um, 
somebody, another guy that I worked with was from Oklahoma City, and he had me try, it was a brisket sauce. Uh, well, it was, I think it was Arthur's maybe, Arthur's barbecue sauce. So correct me if I'm wrong, you know, I don't know more, much about St. Louis barbecue or uh, uh, it was uh, Kansas City. Arthur's, I believe it was. And it was really different. It wasn't sweet at all. It's kind of a bitter sauce. Um, it didn't really fit my taste too much, but they loved it. You know, him and his family and all of them, and uh, researching it was very popular. Mustard sauces. Somebody just said something like that. Yes, I love mustard sauce. Um, but uh, another thing, there's some white barbecue sauces out there that are amazing. Oh, my gosh, some chicken and stuff like that. Anyway, I guess to get off barbecue sauces, I'm going to sit here and talk about that the whole lot. Uh, whole evening with y'all. Um, as far as uh, cookers and stuff go, you know, lately, like I said, I'm kind of transitioning to, toward doing some more of the charcoal. I know I've been doing a lot of pellet stuff lately, and people ask me to do some more stuff on the charcoal, so I'm going to do that. Um, I, you know, one thing I'd really like to test out is, um, is a good barrel cooker. You know, I had that barrel house cooker, and that was great. It was just kind of small, though, for the stuff that I like to do. It, it was, and it, it it was cool, I and mean, you know, I used it for a while and everything like that. But you know, things you get pile up cookers and stuff like that. And ended up uh, learning to a friend had, had one of those loans that you hadn't really only got back yet. But I mean, he loves it, uses it, and everything else. Um, yeah, the ugly drum smokers. There's a, a cooker out there called the Hunsaker. Uh, cooker that I am just in love with. A bunch of my friends uh, on Facebook have those, and they've got just great reviews on them. And they, they, I know this sounds stupid, but the color, they come with this great, gorgeous blue color that, that I really like. But uh, let's see, Jonesy Bones Barbecue, what's up? Chicken Fire Barbecue, what's going on? Yeah, uh, any of those, those big, you know, style type drum smokers. I think those are pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, if y'all, if there's any, uh, let's see, anybody else have any questions about, you know, maybe uh, cooking certain meats or anything like that? I'm, I've got a video coming up this weekend. I don't see, it's not in here right now, but I've got some bacon. If you look on the Facebook page, the Southern Coastal Cooking Facebook page, I've got some special bacon sent to me. And this stuff is just top notch. It's the type that you don't have to put in the refrigerator. It's the real old school bacon. And I'm going to take after a Malcolm Reed's video and I'm going to do some bacon burn-ins with it. I think that's going to be really, really cool. Uh, do some bacon burn-ins. Uh, have that to where you can uh, it's a whole red snapper over the truck. Well, that would be good. That would be good. Somebody just said something about that. Um, I did a whole salmon. Over over my, my rotisserie grill, but I ended up not putting on the rotisserie. And I put some charcoal in there with that, and that was really good, really good. I couldn't get a hold of a whole snapper, but yeah, if I could get a hold of a whole like eight pound red snapper, that would be awesome, awesome. I do think that that's that that it would be a hit. That or, or about an eight pound red fish, you know, something like that. Maybe when the season comes, I don't really know too much about the seasons. I haven't done much fishing in years. I love to fish. Uh, I'm not near, not as near the coast as you think. I'm about three hours up from the coast. Family lives down there. Redfish are popping up. Oh, yeah, pumps are good. But uh, I used to, we used to go down there a lot more than we do now. I just don't have that much time. I see somebody said they got a new Humphreys battle box. What do you think of them? I cooked. Uh, one cook so on so far. Awesome smoker holds it right side. How do you like the Lone Star Grill insulated? Uh, I love the Lone Star Grill. I don't know about the Humphreys Battle Box. Um, do I inject my briskets? I do. Uh, time to time, I use uh, Heath Riles beef injection right now, and I also have used Butcher's Barbecue injection. It's really good. So both those brands make a really good injection. I'm not sure if Heath Riles' is injection is available on the market yet, but I know Butcher's Barbecue has one. They have prime brisket. They have some really good injections. So uh, what am I drinking? <laughs> I'm going to drink me a pop beer. 
Uh, do you regret not buying the comp cart for your Y640? Uh, I sure regret not buying it. With, yes. Yeah, I do. I do. Honestly, I do. That's one thing that, uh, you know, I wish I'd done, but, I mean, at the time, I just, I could have barely afford the Y640, much less the comp cart. So, um, you know, I'm glad I got it when I did. You know, if I waited another, you know, three or four months, saved up for the comp cart, I might not have, you know, done it or somebody on another cooker. So, uh, you know, it was what it was, but yes. Uh, somebody says, are you still in the car business? Yes, I work at a uh, lot here by my house now. It's a smaller lot, more of a higher-end pre-owned cars and new cars. So, but I'll do a video about that as soon as we get going. We're a brand new lot, so we're still working some kinks out. And, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely different. Uh, what's my number one tip for tender, juicy barbecue? My number one tip for tender, juicy barbecue would be cooked to feel, not to temperature. You know, keep checking it, uh, see how it feels. You know, don't overcook. You don't want to undercook. You know, especially with brick. I mean, when you say juicy barbecue, uh, kind of let me know what kind of um, – KZL, what's going on? Yeah, man. Uh, everybody's loving your uh, – KZL fabrications of people who made my new uh, grease gutter for my Yoder out there. So, uh, yeah, I had it on the night during the video. I did a video on it last night. Love that. But, uh, yeah, the, the tender, juicy barbecue, y'all just uh, let me know, you know, kind of what cuts you're talking about, the meat, and I can try to give you some tips on, you know, but the main thing is, you know, you're cooking the feel on beef and stuff like that. Now, on Chicken, no, I'm not going to tell you, cook to feel, my goodness, no, cook to temperature, okay, you can't take chance with chicken. I need plans for competition cooking one day, even that, this local comps, yeah, I'm going to have to, uh, one day, when, I, when I, if I ever get another business where I have weekends off, or if I retire, yes, for sure. Checking in from Dallas, what's going on, Danny, how you doing, man? Uh, we're all saying it's about beef and pork, okay, beef definitely is a cook to feel. You know, pork, keeping pork juicy, I would say, depending on what pork you're talking about, if you're talking about pork chops or what I call white meat pork, um, things like that, brining was very, it was good and pork injecting, things like that. Uh, when you're talking about pork butts, that's another thing. You, you use temps, the guideline gets you around 198 or so, and then start temping the feel. You can bring, use about two or three is magic on that, but you still want to make sure it's just about to come apart. Uh, tips on getting good crispy wings over coals. Uh, let's see. Wings, I'll be honest with you, I'm not the best wing cook in the world. Uh, it's just not something I cook a whole ton of. I usually let the poultry master down the street come over when we do stuff with wings, and he's a, he loves wings. So I'm, I'm more about just the whole chickens and stuff like that. So uh, crispy wings, I, I've, I've done them like, it depends on what you're cooking them on. I've got over coals, I've done them on Kamado and sitting around the outside with like a bunch of hot coals. And you know, the main thing is you want to get them over some high heat there at the end, kind of let them crisp up. Uh, what I would tell you. Megan for Zeppelin, what's up, buddy? Rock on. Uh, I drive around mine to keep it simple. That's another thing you can do. Uh, let's see. How do you get sponsored videos? Sponsored videos. Um, what do you mean by sponsored videos? Like people who pay you to do videos or people who send you products? Let me know what you're talking about there. Uh, buy you classic, just like Green Egg. It's what I cook, yeah. Buy you classic the green egg. Uh, I did I did some Chris uh, chicken wings on my when I had that um, grilled on here. And there's something called a vortex. You can research it. And it fits in the middle of your kamado and like shoots all the heat right up there through the center and set the chicken wings around it. And it really helps them to kind of stay crispy. And, and not get soggy and just really just kind of cooks more of the faster. When you're cooking steaks, often you use your auto wild, just don't know if the price is worth the sear. I, you know, the, my only thing about the auto wild really is it's just small, and I usually cook more steaks than that, so I don't use it that often. 
there's a company out there called uh, Tray. No, it's not. The, it's, it's like Camper. I can't. RV Works. Yes, RV Works. Look at RV Works broiler. Google that, and they have a bigger broiler with gas. I saw the buddy my husband's house, and it really worked good. I might, you know, try that, and I think it was a little bit cheaper. But the auto oil is great. Uh, I spray the skin of the chicken with Pam or duck. Fat. Yes, spray the definitely spray the chicken skin. I do that on all my chicken with that duck fat spray. That is good stuff. Um, let's see, Charles Riverbank Lawn Services. Hey there, Joe. Those lobster tails last night were amazing. Thanks for the advice. I can't wait for the weekend. Boston butt time. Oh yeah, love me some lobster tails. I tell you what about lobster tails. Something to try that's unique is if you get hold of an Australian lobster tail. I love cold water lobster. Like, you know, from Maine, all my Maine lobster now lobsters, and those are one of my favorites um, as far as a whole lobster and everything. But I don't necessarily like Caribbean lobster. All right, that's spiny lobster. Uh, it's just the texture to me is just not there. It's just different. I'm not not a crazy fan. But Giovanni's Seafood, Gio's uh, out there in Morro Bay, California, sent me a Australian lobster tail, I don't know, about a year ago or something like that. And I was kind of like, oh, uh, you know, I thought it was a really pretty lobster. I was like, warm up. So he's like, trust me, try the Australian lobster. And it was amazing. It's a green color. But, yeah, go to Giovanni's Seafood. Check that out if you want to try something different. If you're just talking about lobster tails, of course, you know, for your whole lobster and stuff like that, it's hard to beat main lobster now. Um, let's see. A flat top grid, like a, uh, let's see, I'm reading here. Um, so, so, Jim Ross, are you interested or experienced with a flat top grill? Like, a, I've got a, um, a Blackstone out back there to cook on. Uh, that, that works well, except for the drain, grease drain issues. It's, it's an old model, so I've got it kind of modified. Let's see. Enjoy all your videos. Thanks, David. Um, there's Megan Zeppelin. Let's see. Um, but, yeah, the um, yeah, as, far, as far as flat tops go, this thing's great. You know, I've got that flat top for the Yoda, the big cast iron thing you sitting there. It's just so heavy. You know, I'm just, uh, it's kind of cumbersome sometimes. I don't use it all that much. What's my take on Rec Tech grills? Love your stuff. Thanks, Chad. Um, man, I mean, as far as I've heard, I, mean, I probably know just as much as you know, as far as, you know, reading people's reviews and stuff, the Rec Tech seem pretty good. Um, I like to get some of these cookers, you know, they're made in America. I'd rather, you know, do something like that if I can, a little more heavy duty. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just your preference, you know, whatever, you know, yeah, I, I want something that's going to last a, many a years, you know, if I'm going to spend the kind of money, I mean, I know Rec Tech, they may be less expensive than a Yoda or a, you know, or a, what do you call it, a, you know, something else, I'm just drawing a bike, piss and spits, okay, but, you know, they're still expensive. They're still a thousand dollars. You know, still a lot of money to me. So, all right, Jim, do you still prefer lumberjack pellets? Any recommendation on pellet brands? Yeah, lumberjack all the way. It's my favorite pellet by far. Made for hey Joe on my blackstone grill. I use a skewer and a drain hole to direct the fat and the grease into the drain pan. Ah, thanks for the tip. Okay. Do you have, all right, somebody says, uh, do you have a company that you send your knives to for sharpening, or do you stone them yourselves? Um, all right, the company, no, uh, well, I had a guy here, his name is Jim, that came around and did a lot of sharpening for me. But uh, where's my sharpener? I have a really cool knife sharpener that, uh, oh, here it is. This is what I've been using lately. I don't have stone, but it's this Broad and Taylor. Super simple knife sharpener, and it's great. All my kitchen knives, I love this thing. And it's not very expensive either. I've tried a lot of these knife sharpeners, but I love that one. Um, let's see, what type of apron is that? Uh, yeah, this man, I've worn one of these aprons for a long, 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 long time, and it was it was something that I, that I researched and I researched and I researched and. Uh, I could never find one for sale anywhere around here or even online, really. And 
what happened was I went to uh, I went to uh, online. It just kept searching. I'm trying to make sure I could get the spelling right. This this name here, but uh, I found out that uh, these aren't made here in the United States. They're made overseas uh, in the Netherlands. A company called Whitloft. And I had to order one. It took a while, you know, to come in and everything like that. Of course, the whole site's European. I'm going to do a video on it, but you can order them. Um, they ship them over here for like 50 bucks in shipping. But these things, I will love it. I just love the looks of it. You can order them all different colors and everything. They're handmade. Really, really cool. I've always had Pitmaster X. I watch his channel. He's always wearing one. A lot of the European barbecue guys wear them. So I was like, hey, yeah, I want to get me one of those. So I did order one. Thought it was really fun. Um, let's see. Keep up the good work. Love the channel. Thanks a lot, Ross. Hey, speaking of Australian, ever try Australian Wagyu, the butcher shop? And yes, I've heard a lot about the butcher shop in Pensacola, Florida. I need to try to get something from them and try it. Um, what's going on, Adam? Uh, let's see. What type of state do you like the best and how do you prefer it? Man, I mean, I, I've really. I go, you know, have different preferences. Sometimes I want a fillet. Sometimes I like a T-bone. Uh, I love a New York strip. You know, probably my favorite. Favorite, you know, it's a really well seasoned New York strip. It's really, really good. That's one of my favorites. Uh, ribeye, ribeye is good. I like the ribeye cap. Uh, ribeye to me, and all y'all gonna be gonna hate me for this, but sometimes it's a little bit too fatty. It has just a huge big lumps of fat in it and everything like that. Um, so I'm kind of particular about my ribeye. You know, of course, I like, you know, the, going in there and eating the spinalis and, and the good stuff. And I, But I do love prime rib. You know, I love putting the whole prime rib and everything like that. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, I think that, uh, like I said, different steaks, depending on how the marbling is and everything like that, can, can be, you know, some of my favorites at different times. What do you think about the tender Chuck steak for cheap eats. Yes, uh, I, I've done the chuck steaks before. Um, you know, you can you can do that. Just marinate them right, tenderize them right, do whatever, and it, it's really good. Let's see, smokehouse. Yeah, the um, what in the world? Hell for you. Hold a second. Sorry about that, maybe for example, somehow they held your comment for a review. <laughs> anyway. Uh, favorite rubs on what meats? Oh gosh, I can even begin. I mean, y'all know about my rub session. I've got all these rubs. I mean, I love the the heavy made products. I love Heath Riles' rubs, Malcolm Reed's rubs. And, I mean, gosh dang, Butcher's uh, barbecue. So I mean, I've got you just search my channel for some of these rubs I use. I mean, and even some of these the more local type stuff or. You know, the obscure stuff like Dulce and Dills and, and she, this new rub that I just got, the Grande Gourmet Season, the Rio Grande, it's a good rub. This is this is really, I mean, you get some very interesting stuff when you start experimenting around. Uh, where do I get my butcher's cuts to me? So use the butcher shop floor. Yes, the butcher shop in Florida, Mississippi, Florida Butcher is magnificent. It's a little bit of the dry, but it's great. Um it is really good, really good. Let's see. Uh, when wrapped in brisket, would you prefer foil butcher's paper or non-wrap? I I use foil. But you know how I do it. I usually paint my brisket and paint with the wrap. I just put the foil over the top of it so I don't have a direct wrap right around it. Um, I do have some butcher paper. The problem is when I order mine, it's like, Skinny the roll wasn't very long, so you have to make three or four rolls together. It's just a pain, so the stuff's expensive. So I don't really do much with butcher paper. Um, let's see, just got a sous vide. Hope you can do some more with that techniques. Tell you what, uh, Doug, make sure you watch the video that, that, that I post here later tonight. You're gonna like it. Um, with smoker ribs, do you rotate them through the smoker to get them cooked more evenly? My master really cooks much faster on the lower reds. Um, no, not on the not on the smokers that I'm cooking on currently. You really don't have to rotate the ribs at all. Um, oh, wow, someone's talking about cooking for 80 people. Uh, can't use pork for a protein. What proteins would you cook? I'm thinking briskets and chicken legs. I have two ovens. And, oh, uh, 
Well, I mean, you can't use pork. I would look into a chuck roll. There's Sam's, go to the website or something. The chuck roll is basically a giant chuck roast, basically. It's not cut into roast. And that will be real good. That's a cheaper way to do some pool pit beef. Um, I would suggest that. Uh, I mean, it depends on how much your budget is, but you do brisket for 80 people. Uh, you can get a little bit pricey. Of course, you can always do chicken legs. I mean, those are cheap. Um, you know, I would just, uh, I would look in the chuck roll and do some chicken halves. You know, those things would be good. Let's see. Yeah, we have a pretty good turnout tonight. You know, we got about 30 people watching. Uh, never seen you live before. Yeah, I'm live here tonight. Let's see. What do you marinate in? What's your style of cooking chuck eyes? I did a video on chuck eyes one time. I haven't cooked them in a long time. I had to go back and see what I marinated them in, but just whatever your favorite marinade, you know, something. I like like a balsamic vinegar or teriyaki style or something like that. Uh, what's up, Christopher? Let's see. Oh, you like gold or great dressing? Oh, that might be good. Great dressing would be good too. You know, just whatever you're, um, whatever you're used to. You know, whatever your favorite type of uh, dressing is or dressing your marinade that you like. I, I got a good marinade it's in the refrigerator. I don't know where you get it, but. Was in my grocery store, I never tried. It said thirty minute marinade. It was a little mason jar, and it was really good. The other day, this chicken head, just for for the wife, you know, did a video. Um, have you ever cooked on a Marlboro smoker? No, I have not. Um, air fryer recipes. What's up, butter? Oh yeah, air fryer queen. Yeah, I need to do some more stuff on my air fryer. Uh, let's see, like in Texas, chainsaw mass scraper. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, gosh. Let's see. Brisket on the menu this weekend. Looking to use some Heath Riles Pecan Rub, Cosmos. You know, I haven't tried any of those Cosmos rubs. Let me know how those are. It made products brilliant. Christopher, you got it going on with the rubs now. It's going to be watching your channel. Everyone has been loving my cooking. Awesome, Jacob. That's good to hear. Good to hear. That's the idea. You know, just, um, Trying to get everybody and trying to figure it out here together. Let's see, where did you get that leather apron? Uh, the leather apron came from Whitloff, uh, their website. You can just Google them. I won't do a video on y'all. I, ju I just got it today and I was so excited to get in. It came from, they said they were handmade in the Netherlands. And I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, I want it. And I ordered it and I was just, I was so, look, they even put, let's see, go and see. They put smoking Joe right here. That's backwards right there for y'all. But uh, they put that there on the apron for me, so I thought that was pretty neat. Um, a lot of people, somebody said something about Montreal steak season. Yeah, that is good stuff. Um, you know, I'll tell you what, this, this company here, this Rio Grande, they make a Montreal steak season. I used it on some steaks for Mother's Day. My Mother's Day video, and it was really, really good. It's like Montreal steak season with a kick. And some other stuff in it too. So, but Montreal steak, just the normal stuff, is a good staple to have in the house. You know, I'm looking at all these rubs that are surrounding me here. Y'all can't see what's all in front of me. But there's a ton of rubs here, and left and right. They're just on my little test table, and it's uh, <laughs> it gets overwhelming sometimes. But I mean, there's some really good stuff out there for sure. You know. Okay. Let's see. What's your favorite barbecue sauce and do brisket burn in? You know, it's kind of what I'm ever in the mood for. Um, I like, I mean, just to throw something out there, Heath Riles, the original barbecue sauce, and the excellent barbecue sauce for that. But I kind of tweak my barbecue sauce for burn ins or for brisket. I like to add a few things. And I've done it in the video. I can't think of which video it was, but basically, I add a little bit of balsamic vinegar to a sweeter barbecue sauce, maybe a little bit of A1 sauce, actually, a little bit of vinegar. I just like a little pepper and just kind of keep it popping. So I like to do that sort of thing. Um, do you know barbecue siron? No, I don't. Um, let's see. Dungeness Crabs rule. Heck yeah, man. I love that. Uh, what sports teams do you follow? Man, I don't watch a whole lot of sports. I'll be honest with you. I'm mainly, 
I don't mainly hunting or fishing, you know, just watching those kind of videos or something or cooking. Uh, do you have any options on the pit barrel, pit barrel smokers? Yeah, I hope they're good smokers. I've never used one. Uh, family's favorite rub for steaks, Cosmos Cal Cover Topper. Would say I've never used any of those Cosmos rubs either, but I heard they're good. Um, let's see. Do you think more cost effective to buy your rubs or make your own? I'll talk about that in just a second. Killed anything with a crossbow behind you? Yes, you did. Um, let's see. Mega free. How many days old is the video? Um, which video are you talking about, man? I'm sorry. Um, have you ever been to Frank's Barbecue in Bayou Battery? No, I have not. Hot and fast, low or slow, fat up or down. Uh, hot and fast, low or slow, either way you want to go is fine with that. Fat up or down depends on what kind of cooker you're cooking on. If you're on a uh, an egg or a Kamado type cooker, fat cap up. If you're on a pellet cooker or a, a stick burner, fat cap down, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, do I, what does that question is today get back to? All right, is it more cost effective to buy your rubs or make your own? Okay, it depends how much you cook it. Okay, if you're barbecuing every weekend and you've got to go out there and buy your rubs, I'll be honest with you, it's more cost effective to make your own. It's always just about to be more cost effective. But if you only barbecue once a month, might as well go to the store, buy you a couple good rubs, keep them in the freezer, and it'll last you a good long time. But if you're doing mass quantities to barbecue, so obviously it's going to be more cost effective to make your own. Let's see. Um, Frank is, is amazing. I had to I had to put that on the bucket list to try to try to be able to eat there. Frank's barbecue. Okay. Um, yeah, that's another thing. Let's see. Maybe reject. But I've had the Wagyu tri-tip cowboy steaks given to me by a fellow YouTuber, Rock Ball. Oh wow, yes. That that Wagyu tri-tip had to be awesome. Let's see. Keep the rubs in the freezer, folks. That humidity don't kick in and clump it up. That's right. That's exactly right, uh, Booger. I mean, that, that just the humidity, but but your your flavors. I mean, rubs basically turn to sand. I mean, you know, just it's basically sugar or salt. But you know, you just lose all their unique flavors if you just let them sit out, you know, especially like in the sun or something. Uh, I'm barbecuing at least four times a week, bro. Yeah. You probably ought to make your own rubs. And let's say, I mean, you can buy rubs in bulk or something like that, you know. Um, let's see. Barbecue place. My favorite barbecue place? Ugh, my house. <laughs> Great advice. Uh, beginner stick burner idea brand about getting a traditional barbecue taste and feel. Look at Yoder or uh, Lone Star Grills. Both are very good. Um your traditional stick burners, depending on where you're located in the country, you know, as well, too. There's a lot of good manufacturers out there. Tell us about the air fryer. I never tried one. That'd be Booger's territory. I've got one, but I haven't really done that much with it. Let's see. What's up, Mark? Booger's really in the freeze. Let's see, have you made country style ribs into burn ins? Yes, I have. A while back, and I did those country style ribs last week, and I meant to make burn ins out of them, but I just. I didn't get around to cutting them up like that. Um, let's see. What made you decide to start posting videos on YouTube? Man, just uh, with my job at the time, you know, I used to love to go do a lot of hunting and fishing and things like that. And it's my hobbies and, you know, doing stuff on the weekend. Now I started getting the sales. I didn't have uh, any time off really on the weekend. So I could find something I could do down during the week and do it any time when I got ready to do it. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have to really go by a schedule. And I got into cooking after I got married and everything like that. And, uh, you know, was watching some cooking videos and enjoyed it. And I started uh, watching a lot of videos first and other people did it. And then I started doing it. it just kind of caught on. I thought it was, thought it was a lot of fun. See, Simple Man's Barbecue. I just did a video where I made burnings out of pork shoulder. Turned out excellent. That would be good. Well, that's kind of the same thing as country style ribs. You know, country style ribs are just actually cut up pork shoulder. So, yeah, that would work. That would work. Very good. Very good. Very good. Um, 
you can make burn ends out of a lot of things. You know, if you can get something fall apart tender, basically, and cut it in strips and cut it to cubes, you're good to go. Water pan and pellet smoke for brisket or spritz. You don't have to add spritz is okay. You definitely don't need water pan. You know, I cook in these. I'll see these hotel pans that I use with the racks in the bottom. We're right, right there. You can see. Maybe we'll grab all that, knock everything down. But uh, that's kind of what I use. Let's see. What's my dream stick burner pit? Let's see. My dream stick burner pit? I mean, I love my kingdom. I mean, I guess I'd like to have a, a, you know, something a little bit bigger. But I me, mean, honestly, no, for me, that stick burner, that's fine. That's as big as I need a stick burner. You know, yes, I'd love to have a big, huge pellet cooker. You know, something I'd load down with me, but I wouldn't want to have to man anything much bigger than my kingdom. So, <laughs> you know, that would probably be about it there. Um, if money was on a factor, what brand of Kamado would I choose? What Kamado would I choose? Gosh, I mean, there's some great ones out there. Kamado Joe is really good. I mean, they're all cost around the same, unless you get into something like Kamado Kamado. And, you know, they're super expensive, but I don't think they cook all that much better. So, uh, you know, I suggest like a grilled on is a great. You know, I love that group pit. And, you know, Kamado Joe is good. I don't push big green eggs just because I don't think they need it, first off. And the second off, I think there's more innovative stuff out there, you know. Um, but, uh, anyway, I'll look. Say night fry, tell bye, hello. All right, good night. Uh, let's see. Would you ever want to open a restaurant? If so, do you think you're – Best seller would be, you know, I would, yeah, I'd love to open a restaurant. I just think financially it would be very hard to do. And then I know it's a rough business to be in. I think some of my best stuff would be you know, some of my Cajun style slash barbecue type dishes, stews, and things like that. Some of the stuff that I really, really love, you know. Uh, Somebody says when I have a competing barbecue uh, cookout, and a barbecue cookout. Um, sure, I'd love to have a cookout, but now competition, you know, most of them are on Saturdays, so that kind of kicks it for me with work. It's my favorite cut of steak, so I'm going to ask that again. I'm going to say it. My favorite cut of steak, let's do this, is a porterhouse, because you get the filet and the strip. Two of my favorites right there in one. So, uh, Let's see. Have you ever ran into Malcolm Reed? Do you ever go to barbecue competitions? I don't make barbecue competitions. I would love to run into Malcolm Reed. You know, uh, he's here from all, he's from Mississippi, just like I am. He's from up there. He's up north South Haven. You know, I'm about three hours, about three hours south of him. Uh, I'm a fan of sushi. I guess I do like sushi. Love uh, tuna stuff like that. What's up with you two peeps and barbecue freaks? What's going on? Amen McClellan, what's going on, buddy? You got some Tito's tonight? <laughs> That's what I need to do is figure out how to get a Tito sponsorship. <laughs> i tell you what's funny is um, I had a – shoot, I wish I had the bottle of whiskey around here. I, I don't really drink whiskey much or bourbon or anything, but I had a company out of Texas. One of the guys um, – a friend of mine brought me a bottle. It was really neat. It was a it was a bourbon and then whiskey made in Texas. And shoot, I wish I don't have the bottle here. I'm gonna run to get it. I'll do a video. I'll use it to cook it and stuff like that. We'll, we'll taste it. It'll be really cool. Um, so what's up, James? Everybody saying what's up, James? Yeah, James in the house, man. He's a big name. Now he's a barbecue competition guy for sure. Uh, and McClellan, he does all these uh, competitions. I've watched him. I watch his videos all the time for, you know, getting tips. I was watching, you know, he was talking about cutting chickens in half or competition chicken and stuff like that, you know. And down there where he cooks, they do a whole chicken competition. Uh, you know, it's usually chicken. So, you know, here it's usually chicken thighs uh, that most people are doing. But there it's more of the whole chicken. Um, so he was doing a video on that. It was really cool. He was talking about how one half of the chicken, the breast, is going to be kind of split in half, and the other half is going to be whole. So you actually take two chickens to make two halves, two good halves or something like that. It's interesting. Um, let's see. Anybody else? What's your goal to drink while barbecue other than Bud Light? What's your go-to drink? Ah, I mean, um, let's see. Uh 
usually like a little vodka spritzer or something like a spritzer. <laughs> you know, like vodka and um, what's that stuff? You know, crystal light or something like that, I guess. You know, you don't. I really don't have a wide range of things that I drink, you know, while barbecuing it. In the wintertime, I'll have me a little scotch. Uh, that's definitely nice. But other than that, you know, it's usually going to be uh, just a little beer, you know, light beer. And then, uh, you know, like I said, a little vodka from time to time. Memphis and May is coming up. What's your thoughts on Suvee and everything's YouTube channel? Man, I love his channel. Uh, guy's great. He is YouTube greatness for sure. He is really blowing up that channel in the Google Foods. So, you know, I talk to him from time to time, message back and forth. He's really helped me out a lot. So, uh, yes, I love to meet everything's channel. Um, let's see. What's your go to? Let's see. Ever thought about marking your rubs or sauce? You already have a customer base. You know, there's so many out there. And I love, you know, trying and supporting all these other rubs and sauces and stuff like that. You know, maybe someday, you know, that'd be something I can get into. But right now, I just don't have the time to, to put into it, you know, because it's not like you just mix up a sauce or a rub. And I've talked to a lot of these guys that are doing it. And you say, hey, I'm going to throw it out there. I mean, there's just so much competition. And plus, I mean, you've got to be able to bottle it cheap enough. you got to be able to make it in big quantities. And you know, be able to make some money off of it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just not easy to do. Uh, let's see. Memphis May uh, favorite smoked sausage. Ever had Kaneka? Yes, I love some Kaneka sausage. Of course, right here in Mississippi, we have Country Please. Um, and those are both good sausages. Um, you know, oh, I tell you what, the uh, what's the name of the place? Matador Prime Steaks has a Google Matador Prime Steak Company out of Texas has a brisket sausage that is out of this world good. I highly suggest you give that a try. Um, do you watch Barbecue Pit Boys? Yes, I do. I love the Barbecue Pit Boys. Get a lot of ideas from their videos. Um, best sausage ever. Yeah, definitely, I would say that. Uh, that that oh gosh that sausage from uh, from Maddor Prime is just right up there with the best I've ever ever had. Uh, it is like it's, it's a beef brisket based sausage. It's different. It's so clean. I mean, it's really 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 good stuff. But anyway, well we've gone almost almost an hour now uh, sitting here live feeding. Let us sit here. You have seen any videos of PF dealership you work at? Do you sell cars? Yes, I do sell cars. Um, I had a video that I did at my old dealership where we had a little cook uh, cook there one Saturday. Me and some of the guys brought our grills up there and we cooked, and it was pretty cool. I can't remember. Yeah, we, we had a little trailer. That's how I got mine up there. But I'll have to do a video of my new place once we get it up and going a little bit better. Um, let's see, somebody says, uh, biggest cook on what cooker? Biggest cook on what cooker? I'm not sure. Uh, Francisco, uh, let's see. What is the key ingredient for a crawfish bowl? Key ingredient for a crawfish bowl is that sweet smoky Joe's dynamite crawfish bowl. Hands down, the best stuff I've ever had. And our crawfish bowl is good. That, that's what you need. Uh, yeah, that, that stuff is really good. So, uh, try to look in here and see if I'm missing questions or anything like that. Don't look like we really did. But, yeah, thank you all for joining in tonight. I guess I'm going to wrap this up. It's getting kind of kind of late. I'm still a fan of Dizzy Dust. Yes, Dizzy Pig makes some great seasonings. They really do. Uh, those are one of the first seasons I got a hold of. Like I said, I get so in a day with so many seasons coming in, seasonings coming in. I want to try new stuff all the time. It's hard for me to just keep on to one thing and just cook with that the whole time. I want to bring more flavor to the party. I want to excite everybody. I want to bring new stuff in. So, you know, I, just because I move on to something else doesn't mean that what I had in the past was any worse or, you know, better or anything like that. Um, I've typed. 
the way I talk, Joe. <laughs> Let's see. Thanks for what you do. Appreciate it, man. Nice talking to you, brother. Good night. Seven man barbecue. Okay, let's see. Y'all make sure to see this man's crawfish bisque video. Oh, yeah, I love it. Crawfish bisque is something my grandma used to make. And yeah, I did so, like an hour long video where I broke it all down and st made the, the stuffed crawfish heads and everything. It, it was crazy. So, you know, it took like days <laughs> to make that. So, it was really, really good. Thanks, Jacob, chiming in here. Let's see. Well, yeah, I'm going to have to do this more often. Looks like if I had a good amount of questions, that's really good. Uh, let's see. Uh, for chicken, somebody said they enjoy Dijon mustard, red pepper flake. Oh, that sounds good. Absolutely. Uh, Y640 thoughts. You know, I like my Y640 for sure. But anyway, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and cut this on off at night. I've got to get to bed myself. Uh, I'm going to get this other video uploaded. That I just did earlier, so I want y'all to see that. But anyway, y'all have a good night. Please like my video before you leave. I appreciate it. Go hit that like button and uh, I'll see. Um, you know, share the videos like the uh, sub channel. I'd appreciate it. Thank y'all so much and God bless. Y'all have a good one and we will see you later this weekend. I am out, y'all. See y'all in this.